Hi everyone, as promised, we're going to be working on this. Um, so, I'm just going to run through everything we'll need to fix the bottom bracket. Obviously, replacement bearings, and these were 249. We will need, well, if you haven't got the proper tool for what they call a slip ring, which is on the other side, flathead screwdriver works. Uh, to get the bearing cup off, I don't have the proper tool for that, but I find these work fine. So a large adjustable. But the main tool that we will need is the crank extractor to get the crank off, along with the tool to turn it. And I've got myself, because I actually forgot to get it out, but a smaller adjustable so I can screw the um, crank extractor in. And 14mm socket. Most of them are 14mm. You might find some of the uh, higher end bikes will uh, have a slightly bigger size, but uh, I find most bikes 14mm. In fact, I've barely ever had to change that socket. That's why I just leave it on there, because that's all I really use these for, so I just left the 14mm on there. <laughs> you might find it's a 15mm, but it's rare. Anyway. Let's get cracking. Okay, I've got you zoomed in. The first thing we need to do is pop the dust cap off. This one, there's a little slot there that you can just get a screwdriver or something in and pop it straight off. Next job, make sure we've got the ratchet in the right direction. Just to remove the 14mm nut that holds it on. I've got key in repair position myself. I'll stand up to do this. So Crack off the nut. Like so. Threads look okay. I might be able to get the tool in there. So, just wind the center piece out a bit. And this should, if the threads are okay, this should screw in just like that. There is a way to get these off if this will not screw in but that has screwed in fine. Do not use a hammer unless this whole piece is knackered and you're going to replace it anyway because a hammer will just cause damage. You can see that wobbling around, look at that. Even if I can't get in to swap the bearings, I will still upload this video because at least you'll know how to get a crank off. Anyway, next step. This, I've got a proper handle for this, but you can um, use an 8mm hexagon key. You just screw that in, and as this screws in, it pulls that out. So, it's actually come off really, really easy. It should wiggle off just like that. And then we grab our wrench, undo this, undo the extractor, because we need that for the other side. But we can't see the other side, so I'm going to have to pause you and just turn the bike around. I think, while I've got this off, I'm going to take the opportunity to clean all that up. So we're uh, back in a second. Here we go. It's just the same procedure on this side, although I am a little worried because there's no dust cap on this side. So I'm a little worried in case the um, thingy won't screw in. But if I have to use a hammer, I'll show you how to do that because it shouldn't hurt this side too much. Ok, 
come here. Got the nut off. My bed is currently being used as a tool rack. <laughs> now I've lost the extractor. <laughs> I've got the wrench. So I've got these bits for it. But uh, I've gone and put the actual extractor down. Now I can't find it. I had it. Oh, I found it. I put it down by the crank on the floor. So I'm screw that bit again. And hopefully, yes. Look at that. Couldn't have asked for a better behaved crank. Let's do this bit up. You want to screw it in as far as it will go. Otherwise. You might find this will pull out when you uh, screw this bit in. Aluminium cranks are actually worst for doing that because obviously the metal is softer. So it tends to strip the threads if you're not careful. So, let's do the same again. Now these actually came off rather easy. You might find some of them you need to be like a Mr. Muscle to screw this extractor in to get it to pull off. So uh, I'm actually pleasantly surprised with this. But then again I'm working on a rally and I actually find rallies are really relatively easy to work on. So the next step we've got to get this lock ring off. I didn't get a hammer, did I? One hammer, one screwdriver. Can get proper tools for this, but in theory, if I just get that screwdriver tip in there, let's give that a few taps. There we go. Oh, that's good as well. <laughs> the um, cup is coming off, and I don't want the cup to actually come off. I just want the lock ring. Uh, this is going to be a little awkward. It's not doing what I want it to do. Can I screw that in maybe? Can I hold it with this? <laughs> yeah. Get that to unscrew. it's because there's so much dirt on here it's just locked the ch um, lock ring on it's not necessarily a bad thing but when I'm demonstrating something so there there's the lock ring I'll give that all a good um, clean up sometimes these can be rather tight but if it is like I said an adjustable like this a large one just adjust it and slot it on there and you can turn it but this one's coming off so easy, I don't need to. This is actually why I prefer working on brand bikes to the... Well, I say brand bike, the no-named bikes like Rally, Saracen, Claude Butler, Viking. Oh dear. Bearings aren't supposed to look like that. <laughs> Going by that grease, these were recently changed because that grease, for some reason, is a big blob right in the middle. Um, that's what's left of one of the bearing cages. <laughs> uh, yeah. And I will, I just want to plump that somewhere, I don't want to put it on the carpet. That's what's left of the other bearing cage. But like I said, this grease still looks relatively fresh. Um, and the rest of the bearings are in there. Actually, I think what um, that clump I pulled out was part of the other bearing row. So let me just... Uh, I need a rag. I forgot about that. One rag. 
So what I need to, someone's put far too much grease in here. Someone's replaced these at some point and done a very bad job at that. Far too much grease. Can I get the bearing? Oh God. Here's the remains of the bearings on the other side. Yeah, perhaps I should warn you that this is a fairly messy job. There's some more bits. But I've got to get all this crud out of here before I can install the new. Oop, that's just gone down the frame. Didn't want it to do that really. Because there's going to be shards of metal and all sorts in here. Right, that is... Ugh. Don't be scared to get dirty because this is definitely a dirty job. Might have to go find a different rag. Because I'm having trouble getting this in here. Just want to give it a clean. I think we'll be okay. I can't see nothing in there that's going to hurt. Might be able to get in here better with this one. Yeah, it's not as thick, this frag. There we go. Ooh, mud on here and everything. Right, well, I'll worry about cleaning that in a bit. Now! Replacements, you get the tube of lithium grease with it. Now, bearings do go on a certain way. I'm just trying to get the cat hair off of it. They go on with this bit, the flat side. Good grief. Goes on first, like that. Why did I have to drop these on the floor? <laughs> so the flat side, I'm not even in shot am I, here we go. The flat side goes on first. I'm pretty certain it goes that way in. Some of these, these ends are different lengths so you need to check that. But these look exactly the same length so I'm going to open up the tube of grease. We're going to get this. It says, come on. Ah, there we go. And just squirt a burter. Bunch of this all over the bearings. That's all you need. You don't need a great deal. You don't need the amount of grease they stuck in it. There is such a thing as too much. That slides in there. Now, where's my cup? Here's the other cup. And clean this out. Like so. I'm going to put the grease on first and that goes in again with the flat side facing upwards I'm just going to squeeze the rest of this grease in there like that on this side and that just simply goes back in like this, you be careful, be careful that you do not cross thread it. You've got to force it, it's probably cross threaded. It should just go in nice and smooth, like this. Keep checking you how much play you've got in here. And this is where you may end up. Cat hair 
days are starting to annoy me. The joys of doing things like this when you're on a cat. too far now. You don't want it too tight and you don't want it too loose. We should be right there. All right. Let's give this a clean. And that is basically it. That is the bottom bear or the bottom bracket bearings swap. And just put the lock ring back on. Oh, son of a bitch. Get on there. See, I'm going to have to just adjust the tension on them bearings again. Yeah, because this thing has... There. I've got it. It's a bit too tight now. smaller one because it's still wanting to turn the centerpiece. I don't want it to turn at the centerpiece. It keeps wanting to turn anyway. That's far too tight. Come on. I'll sort that in a minute. But you do need to just basically adjust this, make sure it's not too tight, make sure it's not too loose. Ideally you don't want any play in it at all. There isn't with it there, but like I said, it doesn't want to turn very well either. And uh, fitting the cranks back on is just the reverse. Well, all you need to do... I've lost the one from this side, how can I lose the one on the others? You just bung that back on there. When you bung the other side on, you make sure it's opposite, like that. Hang on, like that. You don't want them going in the same direction. And then it's just a case of putting the nut back on, which I'm sitting on. That's it. You just slide that on, slide your nut on. And just make sure you do it up as tight as you can so this doesn't fall off. Yeah, that is actually a bit too tight. I'm going to have to sort that out. So, uh, there we have it. Next job I've got to do is swap that front wheel because I've just found out it's buckled anyway. So I just want the tyre off of this. I don't know if I'm going to get the tube out because that dust cap is uh, locked on. But the wheel is knackered anyway and I've got spare tubes. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching. I hope you found this video useful. I will uh, talk to you again in the next video. Bye.